Hey guys, welcome back. I am Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports in Westfield, Indiana, and you are watching Marksman TV. Today we're going to be talking about the ATF agents that have lately been going to people's homes and asking to see firearms that are on a list. Why are they doing this and how did they get the information in the first place? If that sounds interesting to you, stick around. It's coming up now. Alright, so as mentioned, there are stories going around about ATF agents coming to people's doors and asking about firearms that they have on a list that they want to confirm that that person actually is in possession of. At the surface, it would seem very concerning that the ATF agents not only know about the firearms that are in your safe, but why are they there inquiring about you actually having possession of them? And how did they get that information in the first place? Well, first of all, the source of the information is actually coming from the gun dealers themselves. I am a gun store owner and I have owned a gun store for a little over eight years. The form in question is the multiple disposition record, which a gun store is required to fill out when two or more uh, handguns, that would be a pistol or a revolver, are sold to a single non-licensed individual within a five consecutive business day period. Specifically, this is the form 3310.4. This is not a secret form. In fact, you can go on the ATF's website and download the copy for yourself and read through it if you feel compelled to. And this form has actually been used in practice since 1968 as it was implemented as part of the 1968 GCA, the Gun Control Act. So ever since then, people have been filling out and sending in these forms. Now, the two handguns that are that are uh, that alert the the requirement for this form within a five business day period, that is a five business day period of the gun store in which the firearms are purchased. So if the gun store is only open Mondays and Wednesdays, it would be Monday. Wednesday, Monday, Wednesday, Monday would be a five business day period. If the gun store is open Monday through Friday, then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday would be the five business day period for that gun store. So that time frame is different dealer by dealer depending on what days of the week they are open. Now, when a multiple disposition form has to be filled out, it will include a lot of the same information that is on your 4473 background check, including your name and address, as well as the specific details about the two firearms that were purchased. One copy will be sent to the ATF, one copy will be sent to that dealer's local law enforcement office, and one copy will be retained by the dealer and kept with the 4473 of the firearm that triggered the transaction, and those forms will be scrutinized and assessed by IOI, those are industry operations investigators, when the dealer does go through an audit, which happens about every three to five years on average. Now, a lot of people might ask, why you, the dealer, why are you sending in all this personal information about us, the people buying firearms from you? As mentioned, it was part of the 1968 GCA. If we as dealers opt out of sending in these forms, then we will very quickly lose our licenses and could potentially receive fines or criminal prosecution. So when a ATF agent comes to your door, they already have the information about the firearms that were purchased. Their purpose for being there is to make sure that you have the firearms. Now, when it comes to these investigations, I've heard a lot of people say that they believe that the purpose of these investigations is to create a registry by going door to door, presumably to millions of people's homes. I don't personally believe that that's the case. Sure, that could that information be used to create a registry? Yes, but I think that there would be a lot more uh, a lot easier ways to do that than go door to door looking at the records triggered by multiple dispositions. The reasons for going to make these inspections at people's homes are typically are cited by having three reasons. Number one is they want to make sure that you are not engaged in dealing without a license. If multiple firearm reports are constantly triggered by you and you know every time you know you buy two or more handguns from a single individual dealer, that report is received by them. If they see that multiple reports are coming in frequently, they know that you are buying a lot of firearms. Of course, that is not illegal, and you can purchase as many firearms as you want to, but they may become suspicious that you are engaged in dealing without a license, i.e. you are buying lots and lots of firearms and then turning around and reselling them. So that could be the first potential reason that they are looking for. The second is that you might be engaged in straw purchasing. That is, you are going and purchasing several firearms, not only for yourself, but for other people as well who may not otherwise be able to pass the background check on their own. Therefore, you are buying an unusual amount of firearms at a frequency that is not characteristic of most firearm buyers, and they may be suspicious that you are engaged in straw purchasing, which is also illegal. 
The third reason and the most commonly stated for this form is smuggling so or trafficking firearms. So you may be purchasing several firearms and then driving them down to Mexico over the border. So those are typically the three main reasons cited for why they are interested in going to your home and making sure that you do in fact have possession of the firearms that are on the form. Now, a common question in regards to this is, is a multiple firearm disposition form triggered if I purchase one firearm from one dealer on one day, and then the very next day go purchase another handgun from a dealer on the second day? The answer to that is no, because the two dealers would have no idea that that interaction had happened at the other gun stores unless you told them. And even if you told them, it would still not trigger a multiple disposition form. It is only if you purchase two or more handguns from the same dealer within a five business day period. Again, to reiterate, if you want to purchase a Glock 19 one day and a Smith & Wesson M&P Shield the next day, you could potentially buy those from two completely separate dealers and a multiple disposition form would not be triggered. Now, the next part of this is something that you should actually go contact an attorney about if you are concerned about this, but if an ATF agent comes to my door with this information and wants to see my firearms to make sure that I have them, do I necessarily have to show them that information? Again, please address that question with an attorney, but my understanding is no, without a warrant, you do not have to provide that firearm to those agents on your front doorstep. Uh, it would likely cause less of an issue or for necessity for them to want to return with a warrant, but I can't tell you whether to, to do or not do what the ATF agents are asking. But again, if you think that you have triggered many multiple disposition forms and you are concerned that ATF agents may come and want to see those firearms, contact your attorney and understand what your rights are in that situation. Well, guys, that is all I have for you on this topic. If you have any questions, please let me know by leaving them down below. Also, if you enjoy this video, please subscribe as it does help us out with the YouTube algorithms. And we do post vlogs like this about every week or two. So again, thank you guys so much for your time. I am Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports in Westfield, Indiana. You are watching Marksman TV, and I will see you next time.